You know how many Jews there are in the world? Only 13.2 million Jews. That's it, 13.2 million Jews. Less than the amount of the people live in New York State. That's it, all over the world. Technically, it's very hard to believe that there's so little Jews. Because everywhere you go in the world, every television station, every radio station, every newspaper, there's not one day without mentioning Israel or the Jews or prize Nobel winners. And all. It's, somehow it seems that everything is around Jewish people. go to some places, I met few uh, primitive or ignorant Gentiles who doesn't know so much about the world, and they thought Israel is an empire the size of Russia, in their mind, from, from what they heard about Israel, 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 everywhere, Israel, they thought it's probably like Germany, like Russia, like United, they, they didn't understand it's a tiny, tiny country the size of New Jersey, and now even smaller. So it's very hard to understand what's happening here. So now we have to answer this question, where all these Jews are gone? The answer is that we are different than all the other nations. Because when God gave us the Torah, which applies to other Gentiles as well, Christians, Muslims, they all adopted the Torah as the truth of God. No one denied that the Jews received the Torah in Mount Sinai in front of millions of witnesses. They just come and try to make a turn to their direction and say that God gave another book. After he got tired of the Jews, he decided to give the New Testament or the Quran and he nominated another prophet. But that's nonsense because the Torah said that God will never ever annul the covenant that he made between him and the Jewish nation. Why? He promised, he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He swore to them that he will never replace their descendants with any other nation. Therefore, whether we are righteous, whether we are wicked, whether we deserve to live, whether we don't deserve to live, the agreement is an agreement. If I swore, it's like a handshake. If I sign my personal guarantee, I gotta keep my word. The number one problem of the Jewish nation today in the world, intermarriage. The Torah says that every Jew is a guarantor of the other. Call Israel Arevim Zelaze. Every day, more than 30 Israelis marry Goim in New York alone. Every day. This is what they know. Not everything is reported. So maybe double or triple. What about American Jews? What about Spanish Jews? What about all over Europe? If you go, for instance, to a place like Las Vegas, I've been there a few times, they claim that there's tens of thousands of Jews. You cannot recognize one of them on the street. There's no way to recognize them. There's not even one symbol that makes them belong to the Jewish nation. They themselves have no idea even what holidays are, what Shabbat is, what Tfilin is. Most of them never had Bar Mitzvah, not, nothing whatsoever. It's already two, three, four generations that are already 100% like Goim. Who knows what is the main reason that caused many Jews marry other nations, even though Hashem warned about a few times in the Torah, very strict warnings? Who knows what is the cause? What's the main reasons why so many Jews are violating one of the most important laws of the Torah? What caused so many people to ignore this order? What do you think is the main reason? Let me start actually from the end to the beginning. If we review the Torah, we find that there's an obligation for every Jew to respect every human being, even non-Jews. Everything directory 
or negative that was said about the Gentiles from the time the Torah was given until now, 3,322 years, from then to now, especially in the time of Chazal, our sages about 2,000 years ago, were only to the idol worshippers and to the murderers Gentiles. Those anti-Semites such as the Nazis, some of the Arabs, that all they care about is to destroy the Jewish nation. The Torah told us, someone who comes is on the way to kill you, you have the right to kill him first. Or, those who worship all kinds of idols, worship the stars, worship the moon, etc. Those are the negative Gentiles, but if they're not, which means they have basically two conditions. If they're not idol worshippers, they believe there is God, they may not be religious in any religion, but they believe there is God, they don't follow any statues, any idols, any stars, the moon, the sun, etc. And they are not active in any arm to the Jewish nation, they're not Hamas, Hezbollah, if they're not in this category, from that moment on, you have to treat them like an image of God. Every person was created in the image of God, Betzelem Elohim. You have to respect them. There's no permission to cheat them, to steal from them, to disrespect them. No permission to deceive them in any way. And as a matter of fact, the most important Kabbalist that we had in the last 2,000 years his name is Rabbi Yitzchak Luri Ashkenazi. Everybody knows him as the Ari Kadosh. Without him, we wouldn't know any, almost anything about Kabbalah. And I know it's in fashion today, Kabbalah, everywhere you go, you hear about it. But without him, nobody would even know what it is. Maybe, maybe few individuals. And everything we know from him came from his student, Rabbi Chaim Vital. That everything he wrote, we know. Whatever he did not write, we don't know. Everything we know, the Ari himself was not writing anything. So, Rabbi Chaim Vital writes clearly that is an obligation to love every Goy. Not only Jews. Jews, it's needless to say, the Torah refers to your brother, your brother, your brother, your brother, Re'echa. So we know that the Torah refers to Jews. What's new about here, that he writes clearly as mitzvah even to love the Goyim. And again, I'm not talking the negative ones that I mentioned before, the ordinary, regular ones. The Gentiles have a share to the world to come. Many Jews unfortunately lost their share to the world to come. For instance, if they don't keep Shabbat, they have no chance to have share to the world to come. They lost it. And there's a list of sins that the Gemara brings. When does a Jew lose his share that he was born with, but he loses it to the world to come? And believe it or not, there are many Gentiles, many, some of them have nothing to do with Jews, nothing. They hardly know what Jews are, they live in the other side of the world, but they keep the seven law. Those are the Gentiles who has a share to the world to come. So we are not coming here, we are the Jews, we are the best, we are superb, uh, we are here and everyone is down, that's really not where we're going to. We're just going to teach our brother, Jewish brothers and sisters that it's not in our hand, it doesn't matter if this Goya, this Gentile girl that you met, she's the nicest person on earth and this is what God think about her, she's really polite, manners, generous, modest, anything you want to say, I agree. You are the worst Jew on earth. You still don't have any permission to marry her. Nothing whatsoever. If she's the daughter of the king of the world, the daughter of the president, whatever she is, it doesn't matter. There's no exception to the rule. Never ever in history a Jew was permitted to marry a non-Jewish girl or Jewish girl to marry a non-Jewish guy. It doesn't matter from what nations he comes, whether it comes from the good Gentiles, whether it comes from the bad Gentiles, doesn't matter about their position, they have money, they don't have money, they love Israel, they anti-Semite, this is irrelevant. There's no permission 
whatsoever for a Jew to marry any one of the nations. When Hashem chose the Jewish nation to be his children, thanks to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the condition of the covenant that he made with the Jewish nation, which apparently it's us, is that we have no permission to marry any other nation. This is a very, very serious restriction. Now, since this is a divine order, and even the Christians who read the Bible, what we call the Torah, they call the Bible, but it's right there in English, in Russian, in any other language, they read it. There's no other way to understand it. And even the Arabs, who the Torah is holy for them as well, they read it in the Torah. They cannot come with any kind of complaint to a Jew who doesn't want to marry them. Because if it was our opinion, the Jewish people had a committee and they decided to deprive this nation, we cannot marry them, then you can call it prejudice, racism, whatever you want to call it, pride, ego, whatever. But since it's not in our hand, we're only following the instruction of the creator of the world, in that case, they cannot complain whatsoever if they're a little bit righteous, if the wicked don't expect anything. But if they a little bit have decency and common sense, they should never complain whatsoever. I know tens of cases of people who watch my debate with a priest, a, a Jew and a non-Jewish girl, boyfriend and girlfriend, and the Goya say to him, I cannot be with you. I don't want to get God angry. I'm giving up my love. And he said, what, you crazy? I didn't show you that for you to leave me. She said, oh, well, I don't want to go against God. If God say to the Jewish people that they cannot marry the Gentile, I'm a Gentile, why should I get God angry? Most people, they go with their feelings, with their desires. They don't go with the truth. We have to still put things in the right perspective. Why? A Jew, after he was chosen by God, and Hashem elevated us from seven laws that we have to keep to 613. And He blessed us. And He called us the chosen people, a holy nation. And He made the eternal covenant with us. And He gave us the Torah and the Shabbat. We became a lot more precious than any other Gentile in the world. Where does it say it in the Tanakh? Let me read it to you. Hashem said like this, And goim kamar midli, this is a warning to the Jews who try to become non-Jews, who try to pretend that they are not Jews in their names, in their behaving, in their clothing, in their jobs. You want to be a Goy? Let me explain to you the difference between a Jew to a Goy in my eyes, which I am the manufacturer of the Jews and the non-Jews, and I am the only one who can rate people. Nobody else can do. Anybody who tried to rate people is a pure racist. I am the boss. I made everyone. And Hashem wrote in the Torah like this. And goim kemar nidli, ukeshachak moznaim mechshavu. Translation, the difference between a Jew to a Goy, to a non-Jew, and we are talking now even the most righteous God, not an idol worshiper, a great gentle person, great personality, Loving Jew, respecting God, everything fine with him. But this is a Jew compared to him, according to the book of God. The Jew is like the water that you bring from the lake in the bucket. And the Gentile is the few drops that stick to the side of the bucket when you put it down. This is the comparison of God between the Jew to a non-Jew. And again, I'm not making it up. I'm giving you the source. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15 go and check in any language you want it's the same meaning and the second comparison is you are the weight for me he is the little piece who fell on the floor that nobody care and you want to be him you have the chutzpah to rebel against me like this to be ungrateful to me do you understand the difference between the heaven of a righteous Jew to the heaven of the righteous Gentile? The law in Shulchan Aruch, in seven different places, repeats. 
that a Mechalel Shabbos, a Jew who does not observe the Sabbath, which is an eternal covenant between the Jewish nation and God, he is not considered a Jew. God says, if you rebel against me and you do not keep the covenant that we made in Mount Sinai, temporarily you exclude yourself from your natural status. You are now a Jew in a band. You are excluded from my nation until you repent and start keeping the Sabbath. A Jew who held relation with a non-Jewish female. In tradition for Mount Sinai, we know that he is subject to a karet. Mefurash bedivrei Kabbalah bekaret. And there is a lost that is greater than any other sex crimes mentioned in the Torah. Over here in this violation is worse than any other. What is it? That if a person made a violation of the rules of God and had a kid from that violation. Forbidden relation and he had a kid. This kid even is a mamzer, an illeg illegitimate boy. He's still a Jew. But over here the kid is a goy. You understand? If he went with Christine and it's forbidden relation and now she became pregnant, he brought a non-Jew to the world. If he went with, God forbid, a married woman and made a horrible violation, and now there's a kid, that's his kid. When he died, this kid will say Kaddish on him, he will help. Even though he came from a horrible scene, he's still a Jew. And if this Jew will become a big Chacham, he can be a chief rabbi. No problem. But if his son from Christine will know the whole Torah by heart, he won't benefit him in any way. Nothing whatsoever. You should know that your God is the faithful God who keeps His covenant and kindness to His lovers. Who are His lovers? Who keep His mitzvot for thousand generations. How many generations we live? One. This is a proof that there is much more than one. In another place in the Torah it says to reward you and your children after you for eternity. It's a clear verse in the Torah. If somebody asks you, where does it say in the Torah there is afterlife? There is the next life, the life of eternity that the rabbis always talk about. Where is the source? Two different sources I can name to you right now. Lecha ulevanecha ad olam, to you and your children for eternity. That's clear. You don't need explanation for that. Leativcha beacharitecha, to reward you in your end. When you die, the reward will begin. Where? When the worms eat your body? That's a reward. Man. That's what God meant. The reward is to the soul, obviously. It says that the soul goes out of the body and returns to the master who gave it. Hashem says, I'm paying to my enemies cash to their face for the little that I owe them to destroy them. I will not delay the reward. I will pay them instantly. Since I want to get rid of them, I don't want to do anything with them in the life of eternity. And they do some good things in their life here and there. I must pay them in the temporary world right here. That when they come to me to the trial, they cannot claim for any reward. Everything they want, they already got. That's why never be jealous with a wicked person, a Jew or a Goy, that has plenty of money and assets. Because if you only knew where they ended up after their life, believe me, you wouldn't be jealous with them one second. So the answer is, you'll be righteous for this temporary life, which is like a blink of the eye before you realize it's over. And then you cash on your righteousness for eternity. Eternity means endless. Billions of years is not even the beginning. Or oh, God forbid to lose it. Depend on your choices.
Oh, uh-huh. 